Welcome one and all, my friends. Welcome to The Late Show. I, I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Now, although for a little while there, I almost wasn't, I will regale you with the heartwarming tale of my exploding appendix, but I will, I'll, do that, I'll do that a little later in the show. <laughs> I know no one wants to hear too much about a hunk of dead intestine filled with poison and bile. <laughs> but unfortunately, Donald Trump is in the news. <laughs> there we go. Recently, people have been warning about Trump being a wannabe dictator, cause he wanna be. His, his re-election campaign from the beginning has been all about retribution. And last week, Sean Hannity asked him point blank if he planned to abuse the office of president to punish his enemies. And Trump reassured America his fascism will be available for a limited time only. I want to go back to, to this one issue, though, because the media has been focused on this and attacking you yeah. under no circumstances. You are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Except Look, what? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border, and I want to drill, that's drill, not a, that's, drill. That's not, oh, no. that's not retribution. I got I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know, he keeps, <laughs> we love this guy. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. Only, only a dictator on day one, OK? <laughs> Only day one. First decree, first decree, build the wall. Second decree, drill, drill, drill. Third decree, every day is day one. <laughs> okay, every day over here, goes back over here. Just three. It's like Groundhog Day, Andy McDowell, legally, you now love me. <laughs> now, obviously, we know he's kind of trolling here. We also know he's telling us exactly what he plans to do. And if he gets unlimited power, he won't be giving it up. People don't go, and that's the last time I'll be trying crack. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was delicious, but I doubt I'll ever. <laughs> One convincing case that Trump plans to be a dictator comes from a recent Washington Post op-ed by editor-at-large and warm rising bread dough, Robert Kagan. <laughs> Kagan warned that America has headed the way of the Roman Republic, writing, indicting Trump for trying to overthrow the government will prove akin to indicting Caesar for crossing the Rubicon and just as effective. Yes, <laughs> Trump is just like Caesar, except that history will never associate him with salad. <laughs> now, not all Caesar salad jokes. Mm -hmm. Dallas. That's 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 part of Dallas diet. It's croutons. Not all Republicans are on board uh, with Trump's uh, one-day dictator idea. Yesterday, Mitt Romney offered this homespun analogy. You know, when I was a uh, kid, there was something called a gumball machine. You could put a penny in, and a gumball would come out. It was automatic. There was no filter. Put in the penny, out came the gumball. Donald Trump is kind of a human gumball machine, which is a thought or a notion comes in, and it comes out of his mouth. <laughs> what are you talking about? Trump is not a gumball machine. Gumball machines give you the same thing every time. A gumball. With Trump, you put in a penny one time, it's a gumball. The next time, it's a meatball. Sometimes it's Kevin McCarthy's balls. You never know. I don't know. We also got a stark warning from former future president Al Gore. Well, I saw the other day where he pledged to be a dictator on day one, and you kind of wonder uh, what it'll take for people to uh, believe him when he tells us uh, who he is. And, uh, you know, the, the solution to political uh, despair is political action. Oh, good. Because if there's one thing I know, it's that when Al Gore warns us about something, <laughs> we take action in plenty of time. Just ask the Late Show's emergency preparation correspondent, Gary the Glacier. Gary? <laughs> I don't know where Gary is. It's like, apparently, Gary must have stepped away for a minute. I'm sure he'll be back. 
On Saturday, Trump doubled down on his dictator remarks during a speech at the New York Young Republicans Club annual gala, where, of course, the theme was angry virgins under the sea. <laughs> that, that was just the amuse-bouche of the douche. Because Trump went on to say all sorts of crazy stuff, like this story about one man's reaction to Trump's handling of the Access Hollywood tape where he brags about sexual assault. And a general who's a fantastic general actually said to me, sir, I've been on the battlefield. Men have gone down on my left and on my right. I stood on hills where soldiers were killed. But I believe the bravest thing I've ever seen was the night you went onto that stage with Hillary Clinton after what happened. And then that woman asked you the first question about it. And I said, locker room talk. It's locker room talk. Yes. It was such an act of true bravery for Donald Trump to brush off his confession of sexual assault. And you can see it all in the gripping war drama, Grabbing Ryan's Privates. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's right. uh, he enjoyed lying some more, this time about one of his lawyers. And another person who's a warrior. She happens to be a beautiful woman, but I never think about that because I never talk about beauty. To me, I can see the most beautiful woman in the world. It doesn't register with me at all. Beauty doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> How women look is not important to Trump at all. Never has been. In fact, for years, he owned a beauty doesn't matter contest. <laughs> Trump also, Trump also bragged about Pretty women. Trump also bragged about pardoning former New York Police Commissioner Bernie Carrick with a very specific turn of phrase. You know, I pardoned Bernie, and he was very emotional when I did it, right? And now Bernie is cleaner. This is the expression they say, I never quite understood it, than a newborn baby's ass. Did you ever hear that? No. <laughs> no. No one's ever heard that. <laughs> Trump said a lot of stupid things, and sometimes you don't want to updraft them, but sometimes you have to take a stand. <laughs> Newborn babies' asses are not clean. <laughs> because, and we're all adults here, poop. <laughs> that proves he's had five children and has never changed a diaper. <laughs> of course, my guest tonight is one of the leading experts on the dictatorial aspirations of old Tater Dick. Later on, I'll be talking to former Congresswoman Liz Cheney. Former, former Representative Cheney. She's got that new book. She's got a new book out called Oath and Honor, A Memoir and a Warning. It is sold out on Amazon already, making it the most successful memoir slash warning since Britney's The Woman in Me is about to do some weird stuff with knives on Instagram. <laughs> Cheney's been warning that the GOP will never stand up to Trump's dictatorial instincts. She recounts that when House Republicans gather on January 6th and members were pressured to sign on to objections to the vote count, as one congressman signed his name, he said out loud, the things we do for Orange Jesus. <laughs> Orange Jesus, have some respect, sir. His name is Gritty. <laughs> also, well, we took a drive down 95 to Philly for that joke. Also, Orange Jesus sounds like the smoothie place you'd find in a very religious food court. <laughs> right next to Original Cinnabon. <laughs> now, how long are we away? Almost three, almost three, almost three weeks we've been away. While we were away, the Republican Party lost one very horrible person because George Santos was expelled from Congress. Aww. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of sad to see George go, too. I'm really... <laughs> I'm really gonna miss those guys. Of course, this leaves a vacant seat in New York's third district, and some candidates have already been floated, like Democrat Tom Suozzi, Republican Jack Martins, and Christoph Mysterio, Swiss heir to the Toblerone chocolate fortune. Mm, no, Christoph. Don't worry about his future, because George Santos has already joined the Cameo app. On the app, he lists himself as former congressional icon. <laughs> Pretty positive way to describe being expelled for fraud. 
acts like Hannibal Lecter calling himself OG Meat King Slay. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Congressman Liz Cheney. Come back. The story of my appendix. Not for the faint of heart.